Let's talk, Ronan. You and I met back in the UK when you used to run O2, where prepaid was a huge part of the business. It's integral within the UK. Tell us now why it's going to be integral to Verizon 2 in the US. Well, I think it's a great opportunity for Verizon and really for two reasons. We have had a relationship with TrackPhone now for more than a decade, and they are the leading provider, the partner of choice in the value and prepaid segment. And they've been bringing more and more of their customers onto the Verizon network. So about two thirds of that 21 million customers they have today right on the Verizon network. And we've seen the opportunity really of exploiting the benefits of the best in class network that we have, you know, America's most reliable network and accelerating the amount of innovation that we can deliver. And we talked to America Mobile who owned TrackPhone and agreed that we could accelerate TrackPhone even faster if we owned it to bring more choice, more services, more and better experiences to that really important prepay segment. It's always been my view from my time in the UK and elsewhere that we have the opportunity, if you have the right network set up and if you have the right capabilities in distribution particularly, that you can serve across multiple brands in multiple parts of the market. So this is part of the growth vector for Verizon and very much accelerating our growth platform while delivering better choice for consumers. So Ronan, I mean, one of the first things though that a lot of folks in the investment community started to ask is, uh, are there regulatory issues here that you're worried about, particularly when you look at how long it took for uh, the Sprint T-Mobile tie-up to finally get finalized, given the concerns here about removing a competitor, potentially a lower price competitor specifically from the market? So it's important to uh, point out two things. One is we only have 4 million prepaid customers ourselves, so we're a small player in the market. But about 13 million of those customers at TrackPhone are already on Verizon. So what we're actually doing is we're enhancing the competitive uh, environment rather than reducing it. And we will operate TrackPhone as a standalone business with a portfolio of its own brands. And we'll bring Verizon's technology, Verizon's balance sheet and capability to bear in TrackPhone in a way that should improve the lot for the customers in the prepay segment overall. It's funny, as you mentioned, the Verizon technology that you can get um, within the brand of the company. A lot of people are talking about the race to 5G. Where do these now prepaid subscribers fit? Where does TrackPhone fit within the network of 5G? So it's absolutely our intention that all of our customers, whether they be wholesale customers as of today or whether they be um, within the Verizon family, will have access to our best in class network, including 5G nationwide, which we will launch before the end of the year this year. And of course, our 5G ultra wideband uh, network, which is the world's fastest 5G. Of course, Ron, at the moment, consumers and your workforce are dealing with a lot, to put it mildly. We're looking at a global pandemic. We're looking at social unrest. We're looking at an economic downturn. To what point does a prepaid phone sort of speak to the consumer who's going to potentially be struggling going forward? Who actually is going to be buying this and where do you hope to serve them? So, Caroline, there's a strong prepay segment, although it's not been big in the Verizon portfolio up to now. Uh, think of it as an 80 million uh, consumer marketplace with about $30 billion of, uh, of revenue. So it's a, it's a big and important part of the market. And we're very conscious that as increasingly people are seeing their connectivity as being essential mm. to how they work, how they study, as well as how they live their lives more broadly, that we have the opportunity to actually expand choice uh, in this space. So we absolutely see that uh, value for money is uh, hugely important to people. But it's the quality of the experience you get. And in the recent root metric uh, surveys, Verizon was accredited for the 14th time in a row as having not just the most reliable network, but the one that had the highest level of access and availability. And I think that's essential. So if you think about marrying um, that capability with the strong distribution and brand strength that TrackPhone has today, I think it's a real positive for consumers, as well as being a real growth opportunity for Verizon, whether that be during a period of economic downturn or whether it be in the long run. I think it's a win-win both ways. 
And so with regards to the potential growth there and the potential to sort of extract, uh, I guess, a, a little bit more opportunity from these new customers, is the idea here that that growth is going to come from additional services, additional, uh, I guess, a usage time, or is this going to be about actually buying the hardware itself, uh, whatever the sort of the upgrade cycle is for the latest phones? So, man, it'll be very much about bringing additional uh, services. So we've already in uh, recent weeks talked about bringing a 4G home product to complement the 5G home product that we launched about 18 months ago. I see a great opportunity as more and more households in the U.S. are going pure wireless, they're cutting the cord, that we can bring those sort of products into the prepaid portfolio for first time uh, ever. We can also make sure that the range of devices that are available, whether that be smartphones or whether it also be companion devices for people who are working or studying at home can also be brought into this space. So it's very much about broadening out choice within the category while at the same time keeping pricing and value at a level that is particularly attractive to this segment.